Welcome back to Read Only Memories. So we just got knocked out searching Hayden's apartment for the data cache. We've ended up in the hospital and... Looks like somebody wants to talk to us. Somebody behind the curtains. You're a patient. They look rather... Businessly. They're dressed pretty snappy. Seems he's your roommate. And what is that chair that he's sitting in? It's so fancy. Is that like an entire hospital in a single chair? Probably don't even need nurses or doctors. Future medical technology is probably really fancy. Ah, better now. Once again, I'm sorry for being nosy, but were you perhaps speaking of Hayden Weber? He's an old friend of mine, and I would be most concerned if it indeed were he whom you were discussing. Who are you? Ah, uh, of course. I've not yet introduced myself. You're quite right to be wary, assuming the seriousness of the situation. I'm Dr. Yannick Fairlight, founder and former CEO of System One Software. I met Hayden during the course of the merger between Parallax and my company. He is telling the truth, at least as far as I can intuit from information on the MeshNet. And I do recall Hayden mentioning a Dr. Fairlight at least once in passing at some point. Ah, I see. Confirmation of my identity. Okay, it's a little bit of a coincidence that he would be here right now, though, isn't it? It's a very, very big coincidence. Were you listening in on our conversation? I apologize for that. It isn't difficult to overhear bits of every conversation in this room on a noisy day. I may not regret it, however, if the situation indeed concerns us both. Perhaps we can help each other. I will not press you for information, but perhaps I can be of some assistance. I remember my association with Hayden fondly, and I would be happy to help in any way I can. I have nothing better to do regardless. Hmm. Yeah, first I want to know, what are you doing here? It is quite a coincidence that we find ourselves here sharing a room, but such things happen from time to time. It's not so mysterious. And... I think it's pretty mysterious. It's up to us to seize... to seize opportunity when it appears. True, I still find it very coincidental. Very coincidental. I'm getting a bit on in years, and this chair you find me in is an advanced diagnostic and life support ROM. Its development is one of my hobbies, so to speak. It monitors my vitals and administers medications as necessary to keep my body stable. Hmm. So, it, I, I was thinking that was just a chair that the hospital happened to have, but it sounds like that's actually his personal ROM, basically. Kind of like a wheelchair, I guess. Does he go everywhere in it? It looks like it's got wheels. I likely would have perished long ago without it, or at least would have been severely bedridden. It requires frequent maintenance, and I'm here at the hospital to have it serviced. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, so that is basically his personal... Uh, his personal wheelchair ROM slash hospital, basically. Unfortunately, many critically injured patients were rushed into surgery all at once, and my appointment has been pushed back. Hmm. Why were they all rushed into surgery at once? Did, did something happen? The hospital administrators were concerned about me, and thus they placed me here in a room with a quiet patient so that I could continue my work while waiting. I do not think they expected you to awaken quite as quickly as you did.
How did you meet Hayden? Hayden and I made our acquaintance when Parallax and my company underwent a merger. At the time, Hayden was merely a young hotshot researcher working in the search data correlation sector. He was assigned to find the best ways to integrate Parallax's own collection and analysis tools into System 1's LIPS operating system. I feel like this is going to turn into something. I keep hearing about the LIPS operating system and the fact that my laptop is, is built on the LIPS operating system and ROMs are actually built on the LIPS operating system as well. I feel like there's going to be something about that. So I, I feel like that's going to come up. And it's going to be a, a thing. You know, a thing. You know what things are, right? It's going to be a thing. I think it's going to be a thing. Like maybe Hayden put a back door into the... I, I guess I'm thinking Hollywood movies. Hayden put a back door into the OS and he's going to use it to hack the world. Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> he was a... Uh, a bit much to handle at times, honestly, but I admired his passion for the subject. You said former CEO? Ah, yes, former. What happened? I accepted a lower position after the merger with Parallax, though that too did not last. Hmm? The new board of directors and I had a difference of opinion about the direction the new company should take. Hmm. The distributed mesh net that current generation ROMs use was, at the time, highly experimental, and I felt that a non-centralized data scheme was dangerous, both from internal and external threats. I've been proven wrong so far, but the security work that goes into maintaining the integrity of the mesh net is incredibly expensive. There were other disagreements, but in the end, I was voted off the board of directors and exited from the company. It would be dishonest to say that there are no hard feelings, but I'm still a very wealthy man, and I found other projects to occupy my time. Do you know anything about Hayden's research? His research? N no, not so much. I remember at the time he had interest in advanced machine sapiens, but that is the realm of science fiction. <laughs> Ironic thing to say in front of uh, a machine that is sapient. I wonder if Turing's going to speak up here. He once showed me a prototype of his. She was quite clever and very convincing, but you could tell that she did not contain the spark of life. I assume that you are another of his creations? Y yes, I am. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Turing, and she is Nelavanda. Um, did you say she? Ah, yes. She was quite insistent on that fact over the course of my conversation with her. Hayden said that she had picked out the color for her casing herself. Pastel pink. Still, I must assume you are far more advanced than she, if you are spearheading the search for your creator. Hmm. Well, he's picked up on who Turing is pretty fast. Perhaps I should have had more faith in Hayden's little hobby. Do you know what became of her? Or where she might be now? Hayden has told me so little of his past research. I'm sorry, Turing. It was a long time ago, and I'm afraid my memory is not what it used to be. If I ever knew any more about her, I have forgotten. Although, I still have some connections within Parallax. Should I stumble over any information about your erstwhile sibling, I'll pass it your way. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. Let me ask about something else. Ah, uh, of course. Ask away. How can you help? Ah, uh, well, I can think of a few ways. I still have some contacts in Parallax and can put out some quiet feelers. Maybe they will know something. 
Other than that, I'm not sure what I can do. But I'm wealthy and bored, so I'm sure I'll come up with something. Perhaps you'll tell me about your investigation? What did you find at Hayden's apartment? The first time we went, nothing. But when we went back to gather up his computer's data cache... The place had been pillaged, and the human revolution had spray-painted slogans all over the walls. Hayden's computer was gone, and we were assaulted. We're still frustratingly in the dark, and running out of time. I fear Hayden is slipping out of reach. I'm failing him. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. What do you want? What do I want? I wish to be young again and off exploring uncharted ruins. But, right now, with you two? I simply wish to help. I have the resources, and it sounds like our mutual friend is in trouble. It's been very interesting speaking to you, Dr. Fairlight. Right, Nilavanda? Yeah, so should we trust him? Should we trust him? It is a massive coincidence. And what were we thinking before? We were thinking that it's possible they wanted... They wanted Turing to lead them to... To what? What was it, what was it they were, that we were thinking they might want to follow Turing to? Like Turing was going to lead them to something? What was it? Was it the data cache? I can't remember. Um, but anyway. He could be doing that. It's, it's possible he might want to just follow us around. Use us to find the data cache or something. Or use us to find the past prototype that Hayden made. But why would they want that? I don't know. It's, it's very coincidental, but I can't come up with any clear motive for how this is going to help him hurt us or something. If all he's going to do is just give us information, then that seems fine, right? Obviously, if he wanted to find us, well, he already found us, so, you know, he doesn't want to just capture us or something. Hmm. Let's see what Turing thinks. Turing, are you sure we can trust him? I don't think we have any choice, Nelavanda. <laughs> That's true. Very true. Uh, I understand your reluctance to involve me. I do hope I can earn your trust. Ah, I think I have a lead for you to follow up on, just off of the top of my head. You said you found Human Revolution slogans spray-painted on the walls. I'm acquaintances with the man leading the current Human Revolution protests at the Genus Clinic. His name is Brian Mulberry. After an introduction from me, he may be willing to shine some light on that particular event. If it was just some hot-headed youths from the organization, it should be an easy cleanup. If not, that's useful information in itself. Okay, yeah, how do you know the human revolution? The person who leads the human revolution, or at least the person that's leading the protest of the human revolution. Why do you know this person? I mean, for someone who used to work at Parallax, at least for a small amount of time, it seems like you would really be highly opposed to the human revolution and their ideals, right? How do you know this Brian Mulberry? Ah, uh, well, when I exited Parallax after the merger, I sought out like-minded individuals to put pressure on the company to avoid full deployment of the MeshNet system. Brian Mulberry was one such person. <laughs> I mean, if you just wanted to stop the deployment of the MeshNet system as it was, that's... You're taking on a whole lot of baggage. Getting into bed with the human revolution. We did not succeed in our efforts, but a high-profile breach of Parallax's servers did force them to put vastly larger efforts into network security than they had planned. Hmm. So that's what Tomcat did, right? 
It's Tomcat that forced that higher security after that breach. A great expenditure of resources I had been hoping to avoid. You're involved with the human revolution? Uh, no, not as such. Well, Mr. Mulberry and I were associated with each other once. It was before he joined the human revolution. Oh, okay, gotcha. I see, so they had similar ideals at the time, but I guess Mulberry, uh, Mr. Mulberry's ideals kind of changed over time, and I guess got a lot more extreme than Fairlight's. I find their methodology too aggressive, and their stated goals dangerously backwards. Well, I pushed for careful deployment of technology after the Parallax System 1 merger. I'm no Luddite. After all, I would likely be dead without the advanced medical and computing technology that goes into this chair. Well, thank you for helping us out like this. I'll send a message downstairs to my assistant, Leon Decker. He is distinctive. I don't think you'll have any problems finding him. He'll present you with one of my cards to prove your association with me to Mr. Mulberry. Make sure you speak to him before you leave. In the meantime, I'll get in touch with some other individuals I know and try to find out any other information about Hayden that I might be able to pass to you. I'll be in contact. Alright, we should get going, Turing. Ah, of course. Please do not let me delay you any further. Good luck, Turing. I do not think Hayden's faith in you is misplaced. You are an impressive piece of technology. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. We'll be in touch. Should I call downstairs to have you discharged, Nelavanda? Uh, not yet. Just let me know when you're ready to go. Let's take a look around first. Gotta look at the window. Yes. Ah, I rather enjoy the view from the rooms in this hospital. The landscaping is superb, and it is part of why I continue returning here when I need medical services. I'm sure it seem, seems asinine to you, but the view is rather calming to me. For a time, after my forced ejection from my company, I was a very angry man. Thoughts of revenge consumed me. I came up with all manners of schemes to enact my vengeance. That ended when I had my first heart attack, and I spent weeks recuperating here in this hospital. The view helped me see I was wasting what I have left in my life on petty schemes, when I had more than enough resources and motivation to move on to new things. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm rambling. You'll have to forgive me. Medicomp! You seem to be doing okay! Cool. You're a writer, not a doctor. Sit back down. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. It's decently comfortable in spite of the coverings. Ugh. Okay, let's go. Actually, wait a minute. Oh, I can't use items on Dr. Fairlight. I wanted to see if he wanted the spoiled milk. I'm disappointed. What if I try to pour the spoiled milk on you, or listen in? Listening to your diagnostic readings so close and focused is... kinda creepy. You'll be going to a place far worse than here if you do that. <laughs> the window is locked, and there must be a better use for the milk than just ruining this view. I'm just gonna keep trying to use this spoiled milk everywhere. What about Turing? Oh, I can't use it on Turing. How about on this? Are you threatened by the presence of something potentially more technologically advanced than Turing? Is it that advanced? Some sort of medical device is hooked up to his chair. It seems to be running diagnostics on his status. Okay, let's go, Turing. Yes, please. What the hell is wrong with you? Uh-oh, I think Lexi figured out what happened, and oh look, it's a little robot Roomba! Look at it, squidge along the ground, and yes, squidge is a word. 
Look at it, Squidge. I'm just gonna keep staring at it. I can just imagine it's cleaning along to the music. Cleaning to the beat. The beat z. <clears throat> anyway, hi Lexi, how's it going? I can't believe you're still pulling the exact same shit you were years ago. This time is truly unreal. Do you even realize how bad impersonating a police officer is? It's a felony, jackass. I should be slapping you in cuffs and dragging your sorry ass to godforsaken backwater state penitentiary right now. I'm sorry, Detective Rivers. The plan to lift your credentials and use them to access Hayden's apartment was entirely mine. Nilavanda followed along only in protest. Also, I feel it necessary to mention that, though you are understandably upset, such language and imagery is beneath you as a respected officer of the law. <laughs> I don't think Lexi's gonna care. Oh, great. The robot did it, huh? I guess I'll just slap you in cuffs then, Turing. That what you want? And by all means, I'll heed your lecture and act a little more goddamn ladylike. But only when I feel like it. Bet your ass it won't be when I have robots running around and pretending to be me. And don't try to shoulder the blame for her. I know that she had to have lent you a hand. It isn't as though you have the hardware to complete the act alone anyway, yeah? Well, actually... Detective Rivers, I think I'll tell you the whole truth, since Snellivanda trusts you. you. Keep it under your hat, though. Metaphorically. I'm actually a prototype designed to be the first fully sapient machine. I suspect my creation is the main reason for Hayden's disappearance, beyond his normal research for Parallax. My name is Turing. Whew. It's a damn bigger problem than you first let on then, huh? The first machine sapient. People are gonna have things to say about that. You sure know how to get yourself dropped in the drink, Nelavanda. What the hell am I supposed to do with the two of you? I... I guess I'm letting you off the hook. Oh, she's blushing again! <laughs> this time, and only because this time I can let you get away with it safely. I don't think anyone will notice your manipulation of that NSF PD ROM. And I doubt anyone will notice I was apparently in two places at once. But mostly I'm doing this because I think you're right. Someone higher up in the department is trying to delay the investigation into Hayden's disappearance. I filled out the full report and was then informed in no uncertain terms that I was to wait the entire 48 hours before opening an official case. And that's after the break-in and vandalization of his apartment was reported. It's not being squashed completely, so I don't think anyone's been bought, but... Somebody definitely has some influence. Enough to buy themselves time by forcing me to follow protocol to a T. Not that I will. But I'm gonna have to keep things quiet. So stop messing around, Nelavanda. There's certainly a story here, but if you keep bumbling around, you'll blow it. Just be careful, okay? I've got a bad feeling about this. I'd really rather you not be involved at all, but I know that isn't going to happen at this point. I just have a hunch that people are going to end up dead over this. I don't want you to be one of them. And I really don't want to be the one making that call to your sister. Please. I'm sorry, Lexi. I'll be careful. I promise. Yeah, yeah. I know. Just... here. Ooh! Some defense. Zapper. Take this, and use it if you have to. Is this the same thing we got hit with? It's not. This is a medium-range electro-laser pistol. 
It uses a low-power laser to create a channel of ionized gas to complete a circuit between the gun and the target, then discharges a considerable amount of current into the air. Think of it as a wireless taser of the older variety. The neural scrambler we were attacked with uses a powerful electromagnetic field to disrupt electrical signals in the target's nervous system. It's far more dangerous, and prone to be permanently damaging to the target. You got lucky. This is a more suitable personal defense weapon, and it is legal to carry a NeoSF without a license. Thanks. I hope I won't need it. Me too, Nelavanda. I'll be in touch if I find anything out, but don't hold your breath. I have a feeling my superiors are going to keep leaning on me to do nothing. Back to the grind, I guess. See you. Stay safe. You'd best talk to the reception rooms of the desk and officially check out before we go anywhere. We should also look for Dr. Fairlight's assistant, Mr. Decker. He should be somewhere around. Okay, he said Mr. Decker was very noticeable. Look at that cute little thing. Look, it even says it's cute. I knew it was cute. And now even the game's description backs up my... my conclusion that it's cute. So it's doubly cute. See, I have witnesses. A cute little cleaner rom scrubbing the floors. Can I listen in? This rom isn't made for conversation. It just warbles at you. Aww. All you can hear is an intense desire to clean and scrub. Endlessly. <laughs> you pat the tiny rom on the... Head? It bleeps cheerfully. Oh. <laughs> I kind of want to pour spoiled milk on it. Who would be the cuter rom to destroy? This thing? Or Alfie? Oh, I don't know. They're both really, really cute. Look at this plant. You're reminded of your much less healthy plant at home. Hmm. They have a Hassie machine. Do you like Hassie, Turing? If you want Hassie, you have to pay using Lips Pay linked to your ID card. Oh. Okay, uh, let's do that. You pick a Hassie hot and drink it. You feel recovered. That was 12 credits. Very good, Nelavanda. Isn't Hassie the best? Uh, I. What? You can't even drink, right? How do you know if it's good or not? You're a robot. Surely you don't need to take in food. How much money do I have? Does it say? Small plastic ID card. Yep. Nope. Doesn't seem like it. I have no idea how much money I have. You know, that's one thing Dr. Fairlight could help me with. He said he's rich and bored, right? Well, how about he gives me a bunch of money so I'm not poor anymore? That'd be cool. Mysterious man. Mm, that can't be Mr. Decker. Not distinctive enough. Comfy and frequently sanitized. Hmm. Hmm. You must be Nelavanda. The name's Leon. De what? You're Decker? I, I thought you said he was super distinctive. He doesn't look really distinctive at all. He looks very normal to me. A Fairlight message to head that I needed to pass one of his cards on to you. Here. Hope the old man didn't ramble much. Not that I mind. Hm. Hopefully he'll go soon and put me in his will. <laughs> what? Asshole. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Right. Might have asked you a few questions. Hmm, Fairlight warned me about you. Gonna turn that keen journo mind on me and pry out all my secrets, huh? Well, alright. Give me your best shot, Nelavanda. What kind of work do you do for Dr. Fairlight? Oh, mostly just go for work, to be honest. I was looking for a bodyguard gig when I got out of the military, you know. 
It was something easy and lucrative. And Fairlight had a posting for someone with my skills. Turns out old tech tycoons really don't need all that much guarding. Hm. So I spend most of my time fetching and caring and giving his pet charity cases a hand here and there. Seems like you're his newest one. Hm. It, is, it isn't what I was looking for, but hey, it beats getting shot at. Why do you think Dr. Fairlight is helping us? The old codger's gone soft in his age and infirmity. From what I've heard, back in his system one days, he would have tossed you out on your ass. But now he's all about charity and baby kissing. I guess he wants to leave a better mark on the world than having headed a really large company that merged with an even larger company. I nearly got him to name an orphanage after me. Maybe for Christmas. <laughs> What's your story? There isn't much to tell, my nosy new friend. Grew up down in LA, joined up with the military as soon, I w as soon as I was of age, spent way too much time dispensing freedom at the end of a gun, and earned me some ribbons. Now I work for a dinosaur with a charity complex. Things could have been worse. My whole platoon caught Dengu fever once. I managed to dodge that one. Hm. Thank you, Leon. No problem, Elevanda. But uh, call me Decker, yeah? I'll be around, if you know where to look. Alright, so we've got what we need to meet the person. To prove my identity, prove my affiliation with Dr. Fairlight. I'm waiting here for my husband. Fascinating. Would you like some spoiled milk? Oh, I can't give it to her. Can I just go around showing my gun to people? You shouldn't point that gun at people. Yeah, good. Placard. A placard for sign-in instructions. The sign here says, Chinese Hospital. Bear in mind, Nelavanda, that we're still in Neo SF. Screen showing hospital information and city updates. Alright, so I'm supposed to check out, right? Let's do that. Patient Nelavanda. My records indicate that you have been admitted for possible cranial trauma and should be confined to your bed. While I am truly delighted to see that you have regained consciousness, I must insist that you return to your room to be examined by a medical professional immediately. Oh man, this last option is really rude. I'm not gonna call it a bucket of bolts. Hmm. No need. I accidentally zapped myself with my own stunner. An accidental discharge of a weapon is a serious event. I must insist that you remain for treatment. Even non-lethal stunners can leave much lasting neurological damage. I insist. Very well, patient Nilavanda. I am prohibited by law from detaining you here against your will. But you should note in your release paperwork that a willful early, willful early termination of medical services releases this hospital and its parent company from legal liability should your condition persist or worsen outside of our care. I am further required to inform you that this visit has expended the last of your year's governmentally mandated healthcare credits. You will be required to provide payment or proof of private insurance for any further visits for routine or emergency medical care. Please take care to fill out all forms thoroughly and accurately, and do have a nice day. Your medical billing makes me glad I'm synthetic. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You should look for more paying journalism work before you get shot again. Was that a joke, Turing? Did you just make a joke? Anyway, now that we're free to leave, we should go find Tomcat and tell him about what happened. 
They should still be waiting for us at Stardust. Sounds good. Let's go. Do you want my spoiled milk now? Nope. Hey! How's it going? You're new. It's the other bartender for Stardust. He's a big bearish type, with a hairy chest and an oafish laugh. Sorry, I don't think we've met before. I'm Gus. How's the Stardust treating you? Um, eh, not bad. Although honestly, you need more non-alcoholic drinks, my god. That's good. We like feeling useful. Sometimes I think Majid bought this bar just so we could stand back here and listen to people's problems. You'll have to let me or Majid know if you need any help. We try to run a tight ship around here. Huh. Tell me about yourself. Oh, there isn't much to tell, really. Majid really has the run of the place, and he's the people person. I just handle the behind-the-scenes stuff. Accounting or scheduling, stuff like that. His stories from when he was younger are real exciting. I grew up in the city, and didn't do anything remarkable until I met Majid. Not very interesting. Do you know anything about Hayden Weber? Hayden? Oh, you're that reporter that Majid was talking about before, huh? Hmm. No, sorry. I've met him since he's a regular, but I've been out and about on business. Haven't seen him in weeks. I wish I could help. So you handle the entertainment for Stardust? Sure, that's one of the things I do. I love music, and I love trying to find up-and-comers to play here. Sometimes they aren't the best, but the enthusiasm is what matters, I think. We've had a few bands and DJs actually get some national recognition after playing here, so we're starting to make a name among artists trying to break into the industry. Still, I have to do a lot of running around and auditioning to get acts that I think will do well here. Majid is very patient with me about it. Hmm, well if you manage the entertainment here, then could you fix the freaking arcade machines? They're all broken, I want to play them! Alright, I'll let you know if I need anything else. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this, but don't feel bad if you need to interrupt me for something. Alright, let's find Tomcat. Focused patron, you're new. Anybody new over here? Ah, you're new. VIP bouncer. Hey, Nilavanda. How goes the search? Not great. Hayden's apartment was ransacked and someone stole the data cache. Shit. I can't say I saw that one coming. I figured that they'd nab anything they needed the first time they hit the place. Hmm. Any ideas who it could have been? The walls had been spray-painted with many grotesque Human Revolution slogans. It is possible that Hayden was targeted by the organization for his work at Parallax. While my development may have been a secret, he is rather well known for his work on virtual intelligence data. A layman would not understand the critical differences between myself and a VI, nor do I think the average Human Revolution member would care to make the distinction. Of course, it is more likely, by almost 15%, that it is an effort to throw us off the trail. That's what I think it is. I think it's to throw us off the trail. Okay, I definitely want to mention Dr. Fairlight. Let's see if Tomcat knows anything about him. We talked to a Dr. Fairlight. He offered to introduce us to someone in the Human Revolution. What? Yannick Fairlight? Uh... When did you run into him? 
<laughs> okay, so Tomcat knows him. Oh, um, we were ambushed at the apartment with some kind of a neural stunner. We were able to leave the hospital and hurry straight here as soon as Nelavanda regained consciousness. Well, shit. Things sure are getting more serious than I first thought. You'll need to keep a sharp eye out. The bastards know you're looking now. I'm confident in Nelavanda's ability to push on. She's surprisingly stubborn. What do you know about Dr. Fairlight? Hmm. I can't say I know much about the man. Fairlight always was a bit of a shut in, even back when he ran System 1, his old company. He just about dropped off the face of the earth after the merger between them and Parallax. He shows up in the news once in a blue moon for some charity thing or another. But, well, it's all just rumor. But I've heard he holds a grudge about it hotter than the Clantons after the... Erps? What? Is that a sports thing? What's a Clanton and what's an Erp? I'd take care to look this particular horse in the mouth real close if I was you. Okay. So perhaps he's not as altruistic as he seems. Maybe he still holds a grudge. And he still wants to perhaps use me to hurt Parallax in some way. Very possible. Very, very possible. Alright, fair enough. We'll be careful of him. Still, I guess it's a good thing y'all were already making plans to head over to the Genus Clinic. While y'all were chasing your tails, I managed to find a way into the Parallax Network. Once I'm in, I should be able to dig out any files about Hayden easily enough. Fantastic, Tomcat! I knew Hayden's faith in you was not misplaced. How long do you think it will take you? Ah, well, that's where the rubber meets the road. Parallax actually has considerably better net security than last time I cracked in. I'm gonna need physical access. I've got a good idea where a node for us to slice into is but it ain't exactly in a nice part of town. In fact, police have basically wrote it off as a lost cause. Not enough profit in it. I know Jess has some contacts around that area. Oh god. Jess the person who hates me? She's that girl that chewed you a new rear when y'all first came here. Yep, I remember. It's a tough sell, but she might be able to help y'all get in and out of that part of the city without ending up in a parts bin at an organ chop shop. Hmm. Yeah, profit. Not enough profit in keeping that part of town clean. The police privatized. The police privatized? What? That is a horrible idea. Well, I mean, it's good for profit, of course. So it's not horrible for everybody. But... Horrible for general citizens. Profit? It's really gone to shit since the police privatized. Hey, we ain't got it that bad. I mean, at least our police force owns its own self. I hear down in San Jose, the richer neighborhoods have actually started hiring the gangs to protect their places. Jesus, really? sad state when even the rich folks can't get good police work. And the less said about LA, the better. So why does Jess have contacts in that part of town? Is she from there? You might not be able to tell, considering her viper's tongue and penchant for hitting the clubs harder than she's got any right to. But Jess is actually an attorney. <laughs> what? She's an attorney? I never would have guessed. Like, wow. She specializes in defending people in violation of the Humanity Protection Act and does almost all of her work pro bono. Well, that's awesome. Sounds like she's a really good person. To everybody but me. That's earned her a whole gaggle of pals amongst the hybrid community around here, as you might imagine. Ain't no one gonna cross her in that part of town. 
Black market hybridization ain't exactly HPA compliant, if you catch my drift. And none of them ever know when they might need her to defend them in court. Fun. Guess I'll go grovel until she agrees to help. That's the spirit, Nelavanda. I need a little time to get all my tools together to slice into Parallax's network. But y'all keep me updated. Maybe... Y'all? All? Why are there so many L's? Y'all? Y'all? What, what is that? Y'all all get lucky and find that data cache soon. Oh, y'all. Y'all will. You all will. Oh my god. Look at all those apostrophes. You all will. Y'all... 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 Oh, that's so weird. Maybe y'all will get lucky and find that data cache soon. But I ain't gonna count on it. Jess is still hanging around here at the Stardust, but I saw her head over to the VIP area. Or VIP room, rather. Eh, same difference. Room, area. It's hybrid night, and she's a popular gal. Just please remember to play nice, or her friends will thump you something fierce. I'll send Jess a message letting her know y'all are looking for some assistance, and we'll see what happens. We'll be in touch, Tomcat. Sure thing, hun. I've got to head on out of here and get started on setting up the run. Just have Turing let me know when y'all are ready. Oh. I see Jess over there behind some ropes. Let's go over and say hi to her. <laughs> Is she even gonna let me inside? Oh, wow. I... I guess so. Oh, hell no. Great. Look, I'm really trying to have a good time, despite all these dumbass human revolution bigots stinking up the city. The last thing I need is you prodding at me for whatever scant bit of information you think I have. I asked around about you, Jerno, and I don't have anything to say to you tonight. Besides, the VIP section is only for hybrids and friends on hybrid night, and there's no way I'm vouching for you since I know what you're here for. So scram. Oh god, the bouncer's kicking me out. You heard her. Let's go. How rude. She didn't even give us a chance to explain ourselves. We have to get back in there and get her to give us a chance to talk. Surely she will see the importance of our task once we've explained everything. I'm certain we can make her see reason. But that bouncer doesn't look like they would let us back in. Perhaps we should try befriending somebody nearby and convince them to vouch for us. It's a statistical long shot, but the worst case scenario shouldn't leave an excessive amount of physical damage. <laughs> Alright, befriend somebody who can vouch for us. Sounds like a good idea. I'm good at making friends. And hey, there's new people to meet. Distant patron. Focused patron. Distracted patron. Oh, what are they wearing? They look really cool. So, I think I need a hybrid to vouch for me, right? They have to be a hybrid. I mean, it's hard to tell, but this person doesn't look like a hybrid. This person... Uh, hard to tell, but this person definitely is a hybrid. You can definitely tell because of the ears. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to try to get somebody to vouch for me so I can get into the VIP section and convince Jess to help us.